And in the end, this little board is all we need for complete remote control lights and sounds of BB-8's head. Hey robot fans, welcome back to the build. Ah, BB-8, my first droid. This was a great project. It rolled, it talked, it moved its head around, but all that worked just barely and not as well as I would have liked it to. A lot of BB-8's mechanics, and especially his electronics, need a big upgrade, but at the time, the idea of redoing all that was so daunting that he has basically collected dust for the past year or so. Well, today we're going to dust him off and see if we can give this old boy the much-needed upgrade he deserves. I'm going to dip my toes back into the water with the head. Previously, the head worked in an autonomous mode. It would play a random sound at a set volume and a set interval, and the lights would work as they were supposed to, but there was no user input. This is going to be my first upgrade. David Scott, a fellow BBA builder, has a thread on the BBA Builders Club forums about this great little MP3 module he found with a built-in amplifier. I started with the simplest setup possible, just the MP3 module wired up to power. I have 10 BB-8 sounds loaded onto the MP3 player, and I can trigger the first six of them using these six pins on the side of the module. As these pins get grounded, they play the sound associated with them. Next, I moved on to controlling the MP3 module with a microcontroller. In addition to grounding the pins, the sound can also be triggered via serial communication. That voice you hear is David Scott's. He wrote a nice little library for this module, and that library was further enhanced by a couple other users on the boards. I'm specifically using the A. Freeland version of this library from here on out, but you can follow all the progress and builds of this library over at the Builders Club thread I will link in the description below. I don't plan on using anything nearly as big as the Arduino Uno, so I moved the code over to a smaller microcontroller which is telling the module to play a random sound file at a set interval. This will be the basic setup for my autonomous mode. Next up was volume control via this potentiometer, a feature I sorely missed in my first iteration. The key to the lights in BB-8's head is the PSI. This light needs to mimic the volume intensity with its brightness. To do this, you can use the microcontroller to read the voltage output going to the speaker and map the highs and lows of that output to an LED. This works great, however, as the volume changes, the range of voltage going to the speaker changes. So when the volume is low, the light would never be as bright as it is when the volume is high. So I had to write some long-handed code to map the light based on the volume range of the module. This was tricky, but the results were pretty good, and I get pretty even brightness on that LED no matter what volume I have set. With the code for the light written, it was an easy port over to using NeoPixels. There's going to be a lot of lights in BB-8's head, 19 to be exact. Each standard LED requires two wires and a resistor to work, which means using standard LEDs requires 38 wires and 19 resistors. That's a lot of unnecessary mess and weight added to the head. NeoPixels are great because they only require three wires no matter how many lights you use. You just have to keep daisy chaining them onto the strand. They also don't require resistors, so it saves a lot of mess. At this point, we have an autonomous MP3 playing BB-8 with some manual volume control. Good, but not great. I want to be able to trigger specific sounds when needed via these buttons on my remote control. I'm testing that with these two buttons attached to our breadboard 8 here. These buttons trigger the sound and reset our timer on the autonomous sounds so that they don't run into each other. And after a little breadboard reshuffling, I was able to split all of these controls off to a separate board and have everything controlled via Bluetooth with these HCO5 modules. We now have a fully remote controlled BB-8 lights and sound setup. Woohoo! The only problem now is that this is all sitting on two giant breadboards. You've heard me mention weight a couple times, and that's because keeping BB-8's head as light as possible is the key to keeping it from crashing. So my goal is to make the smallest PCB possible to house all of these electronics using as few components as possible. I managed to get everything shrunk down to a 41mm by 49mm board. This will house the Arduino, the MP3 player, the Bluetooth module, power conversion, and a power switch. While I was at it, I also made a board for the radar lights. As you can see in my current setup, I'm running six standard LEDs and all the excess that comes with it. I'm going to replace these lights with these little suckers. Three millimeter NeoPixels, a pain in the butt to solder, but worth the effort. This whole idea is a little overkill since BB-8 is only ever seen with one of these lights on, but I plan on doing some fun animations with the lights, so I want access to all six. 
Finally, I decided to make a little board for my temporary remote control while we get this whole head set up. A few weeks later, the boards arrived from PCBWay and I got soldering. Everything went really well with one glaring exception. I made a 5 volt pad for each of these NeoPixels, but I guess I forgot to connect them together, so I had to go in and do a little wire jumping to get it working. It gives BB-8 a little bit of character though, right? But nonetheless, everything works. I printed out a little remote control board and battery holder, and I printed out a super compact mount for the headboard that holds the batteries and slips nicely onto my internal head crossbar. Next comes the trickiest part. I don't want the standard LEDs in my radar eye, but I do like the look of the red LED bulbs. So I'm going to hack off the leads and glue the bulbs directly onto the NeoPixels and see if I can get all of this to align into my 3D printed radar eye piece. With all of this done, we can start wiring the existing BB-8 NeoPixels into the board and onto the radar eye. We can update the code for the 19 lights, mount the speaker, and we are good to go. So this is working great. I have five sounds attached to the little remote, which can be triggered at will. I even have some way too blinding volume indicator lights attached to my volume knob. Even at its mid-range setting, it's pretty loud, which is good. The speaker I'm using is not a speaker at all, but actually a transducer. So rather than vibrating a speaker cone, it vibrates whatever it is attached to. So in this case, BB-8's entire head becomes a giant speaker. This setup is great for a standard BB-8 head, but I want to take it one step further with some animation on these lights. I made an extra toggle on my remote to activate animation mode, so I think I'll be doing one more video about that and getting all these animations set up. There is also a technical problem that needs to be addressed. If I turn BB-8's volume all the way up and the batteries are fully charged, I start getting some electrical issues in the form of glitches in my lights and sounds. After a bit of cursing and fumbling around through data sheets, I realized that I did not properly heat sink my 5 volt power converter and the heavy current draw at full volume is causing it to go into thermal shutdown. It's an easy fix, but it will involve making a new board. As always, this project is going to be open source and fully available for anyone to make on their own, but I think I'm going to hold off on posting any of these files until the new board comes and I get this technical glitch sorted out. So stay tuned for the next video, we will give BB-8 some fresh new animations, we'll fix this technical glitch, and we'll get this head all squared away. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.